Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for July 10th through the 16th, 2023. So as we begin, I'd like to thank everyone who is returning to this weekly series and to also welcome any of you who may be new to my channel. Um, just a few reminders and announcements as well. But first, make sure that you subscribe so you can and select the all notification bell, like, dislike, and also leave comments. Um, also, um, if you are considering getting an angel reading with me, you can go to my current website, theangelschoolcom slash services, and that and all the links I'm going to mention are in the description area below. Um, if you'd like to support my channel with a donation, um, then you can select my PayPal me link. Two things. Um, if you haven't checked out the general monthly angel reading, make sure that you do that. Um, that that probably be the first link underneath the in the description area. And also over the weekend, I'll be uploading them. I finished recording them, but I didn't upload them. This heat, I'm trying to record the videos and I tried to do it without the AC because it was just, you know, a little noisy. Um, it was challenging. <laughs> and the heat just makes you so tired, right? So anyway, but they're coming out this weekend. I'll start uploading them um, after I record this video. So just be on the look, look out for them. All right, so let's just take a moment to take a deep breath. And just tune into your heart space. And as you're breathing, just allowing your your body to relax. And they're um, wanting to help you with your heart chakra. So as you just tune in for a moment, your heart chakra is aligned with the planet Venus, which is already an ascended planet. So just tune in to that frequency. Just You can just silently connect in and you can say the name Venus three times and that will open up your heart chakra to receive the portal of light that will connect you to that planet and all of its ascension aspects. And as you're doing this, you might feel that light pouring through you. You might feel your energy shifting And just focus on allowing your heart to be open and receive the light. Your heart chakra, the fifth dimensional heart chakra is pure white light. And you may see um, very pale pink in some aspects. And they're calling for the 11th dimensional ascension flame of Andromeda. So just call it in front of you and then just breathe it in to your heart chakra. And breathe it into all the cells of your body.
and there is a goddess energies coming through like lady venus and lady gaia and so just be aware of your feet roots connecting into the earth be aware of your earth star chakra beneath your feet as well And just feel it expand. So the angels are giving me a sense right now of this upcoming week as being full of opportunities for you. However, the, the thing is the preparation for the, those changes that are coming. And so they really want you to just be receptive to abundance in, within your heart. To just allow yourself to receive without panicking, without allowing your shortcomings, doubts, fears to sort of prevent you from seeing yourself um, going through the transition. So quite often we tend to focus on when something, an opportunity is presented to us, we tend to focus on our shortcomings. It's almost as if this thing that we've desired or wanted intimidates us because when we see it we are projecting our fears and our inadequacies we're projecting the past what we knew the limitations that we have dealt with and the failures or the disappointments and it makes it difficult for you to see yourself in a state of progress or success even. Now, this has been coming up in some of the readings I've been doing recently, and they want you to understand that nothing can be presented to you that isn't right for you. If it's not in alignment with you, it wouldn't be able to show up because of the laws of attraction. So then what's going on is that our insecurities, they keep showing me sort of a, you know, a naked behind. So, and, and it's very, um, sort of the, like perfect glutes, <laughs> right? So that means is that your insecurities are very entrenched. I mean, you've perfected the art of insecurity. And this is because we don't understand that the path that we have to travel to reach that goal or that opportunity will prepare you all along the way to transition into that role. So to waste energy Deciding now from where you stand, which is you stand sort of in the middle between what you've perceived about yourself and what you are possibly receiving as the potential of where you're going. 
And you can't determine, you can't determine rather, if you're going to succeed or fail. You can't determine if this is going to make you unhappy or if you are going to, if this is not going to be suitable to you. Now, yes, you do, you have a certain awareness of yourself, but this fatalist type of mindset that the ego keeps producing would reject every plan and idea placed in front of you or in the distant future before you, the potential of an opportunity, it would rip them all to shreds. And so there was a, a, a reading, uh, one of the Zodiac readings where I saw sort of this path, saw this tree and the path split to go around it, but it looked like it would meet again um, once you got around the tree. And it was this sort of indecision about which way to turn. When you're going to end up, those two paths are going to end up joining somehow at some point. And this is sort of similar in the sense that right now, opportunities, whether they are things that you have to make a decision about in terms of this is a, a, a real opportunity that's been presented to you, choose. Or if it's possibilities that are being presented to you in your awareness, and you need to choose. And there may be several of them, several of these possibilities. Now, it might be a little bit more challenging with possibilities than opportunities. But I would, for a moment, ask you to think about them in the same way, in this way. And you've heard me say this recently, as they've been showing this to me as well. One, know your strengths and really focus on your strengths understand your weaknesses but don't let them determine all that you can be and who you are right now and all that you can be and then because if you can't do that, then it's going to be very difficult to see your potential, to see it, to encourage it, and to have faith in it. Because your potential is something that has not yet been realized, but we get a sense of our potential. And in order to really be open to possibilities, we have to be open to our potential. We have to be encouraging of ourselves. And the only way to do that is to really know your strengths, to nurture them, to encourage them, to put them to use as best you can. If it's like, and, 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 and we're moving forward anyway but if 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 you had a limb that was not um functional or that was preventing you know um full uh, the preventing you in some way in terms of support you would then play to all of your strengths so that you could move or do what you needed to do. You would be seeking out ways. Um, there, and I'm, I'm gonna forget the pianist's name. I think somebody just told me about it. But there was a pianist who 
because I think of something, tendonitis or something could not play with his right hand anymore. And so he, he only had his left hand. Now most pianists would say, that's it, I'm done. I gotta do something else. And yet he just started playing left hand pieces and people started writing them for him. So, I mean, can you imagine the confidence of, of already performing and then having, um, you know, part of yourself missing that you can't fully participate? And then, because the, 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 I mean, all of us go through stage fright. And so it just adds layers. But the idea is if we're focusing on our strengths and what we can do. So he, he put himself on the stage doing what he could do well. And it was extraordinary what he could do with that hand. And so there is a, this, and he found then when, when, when you do this, then the possibilities open up. They're just new possibilities. And then those opportunities will keep showing up. But you've got to know deep down that the journey, and I think this is a part that was an aha for me, that the journey prepares us. The journey prepares us for our destination. And so if you never get on a path, you're missing out on all of that preparation, all of the training, all of the stages that help you to become that new version of yourself. Because that is what any opportunity or any possibility will do. It's going to change you. And this is why you can't fully know who, what you're capable of until you put yourself out there. And what we have to have faith in is that the universe has whatever we can see, whatever is real and there for us, is because it's aligned for us, which means it's, it's encoded for you to succeed, even if there are disappointments and failures. Those are also a part of the codes of success. So if you can help yourself to not waste so much energy fretting over the choices. Don't allow yourself to get talked out of what you desire. And it's also about being afraid or to say to own your desires because you know, I remember growing up, just talking about my singing, for instance, you know, people would tell me, you know, really just don't let your, they would tell you, number one, not to be proud of your talent because that pride was vanity and it was a, a sort of a sin or evil and that God would not like it. So what that made me do through most of my life was sort of downplay, sort of, I mean, in a way, I don't know if I physically did it, but it caused me to hold my head down. So if I received applause, it was to, to close off so that I didn't become prideful. It was so interesting to just um, hear um, Leontine Price talk about how she loves her sound. She thinks it's the most beautiful sound. You know, and that kind of, oh my God. Um, I was, you know, could never imagine doing that because I was told not to do that, right? And what am I getting at is that if you're not 
if you don't enjoy what you do, it's not wrong for you to have desires. It's not wrong for you to, to want to be successful. It's not wrong for you to want to be the best at what you do. Or it's not wrong for you to want to produce the most beautiful art or the, to the most beautiful singing or music or whatever it is. These things are gifts in and of themselves so that you want, you desire them and you want them to be the best. That means you want your your gift to be extraordinary. The problem is, and the flip side of that is, it already was, it already is. Your gift is already extraordinary. We just have to stop holding ourselves in any kind of posturing, whether it's too proud or or too shy. Just stop holding in any type of posturing and just flow, express, just be Because that is the ingredient that what you're trying to do needs. That's the magnetic, attractive aspect of whatever it is you're looking for. And you can only get there if you know. So if you you know you do this really well, or you know you have these certain things that you're good at, whether it's a talent or it's a skill, or it's just a a part of your personality. Play that up. If you're going into a job interview and they're talking about, and they say they want this and this and this, and you start to feel a little insecure because you don't know, you don't know really what your potential is with that, then focus your attention and their attention on your strengths. Show them what they may not have been looking for themselves because they're in a fear mind. You know, when people are looking for people, sometimes, well, not sometimes, uh, things happen to them. You know, the people who hire, like they hired somebody and this went wrong and oh, and they, and now they have, they're panicked and they never want to make this mistake. So they're focused intently they're 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 cutting off themselves from seeing the bigger picture and only when the person who's in power that is to say the one who has the most knowledge of themselves the most respect for themselves this is the one this is the person with the strongest vibration and that's what i mean by power and if you show up knowing who you are in these three different ways i mentioned then you you being afraid because you think you because of what you think you might like lack or your known weaknesses will only find both of you not finding what you're looking for in the other All right, this number keeps coming to my mind that I saw when I was shuffling the, the deck. It's 959. So it just keeps saying, hey, remember me? <laughs> All right, so it says, it's time to change your career so that it matches your spiritual beliefs because that's how you find your meaningful mission in life. And so this is somehow what's causing you to this change and the, the your potential is starting to light up to you and it's giving you, it's showing you possibilities and it's doing it so that you can be in alignment with something that gives you joy and purpose and meaning and does extends that 
to those who would receive and benefit of what you offer. So, and this is happening not just in Korea, but it's also happening globally. Right now, we're struggling to find our potential. And we're and it seems like it's just a bunch of arguments. It seems like laws are being passed that are taking us back. But everything that happens provokes us forward. Because no one in history has ever just set back and taken it and done nothing. So when this is why I keep saying that peace for me does not um, negate contrast. Peace is, is, is for me is an awareness, a state of mind where we will no longer fight with the contrast, but we will use it as tools to help us to build peaceful outcomes or to construct um, peaceful outcomes where everyone is able to benefit. So don't lose hope. Don't say that, don't think to yourself, it's going, it's getting really bad. This chaos is the process of change and change is the fulfillment it's the fulfillment of your prayers. We're getting there. The will is still turning forward. We're still moving forward. However, there are things that have to happen in order to keep waking each of us up in new and different ways. The chaos shows us possibilities. It disrupts complacency. So we have to embrace contrast for what it is. Because what I'm telling you is that the universe uses all points of view for the higher good, either to provoke or to smooth a path forward. Sometimes a path forward can be smooth and sometimes has to come out of very difficult lessons so that everybody else, when they receive the lesson and they process it, then they can, I keep saying the word respect, then they can respect everyone's voice and then find a way to move forward. We don't need to learn that way, but if it's the only way to, uh, it, it, uh, otherwise, well, it's the only way that progress will not be prevented. We either find a way to agree on our own or we have conflict and then we find out the hard way. But it's still a way. Now let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with this month. Oh. And it's Archangel Hope. So this is a great... Um, message here because it's one this archangel is bringing us her lantern of hope and she's telling us that there is a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel there is a path a higher path and you just haven't seen it yet but if you call upon her she will help illuminate that path for you so instead of struggling within yourself, fighting, resisting, call upon Archangel Hope to illuminate a higher path or the higher possibilities and opportunities for you. If you just find yourself stuck in a cycle and you just keep coming back around to the same opportunities, you know, some of you might be looking for a new job or a new relationship and you keep attracting the same kinds of things or you keep looking for the same job or and you keep getting the same results, which is disappointing. 
call upon Archangel Pope to help you see, to illuminate your awareness, to help you to see that other perspective or the alternatives you haven't really looked at yet. Maybe you are you're you know what your strengths are, you you know what your weaknesses are, but you don't have clarity about your potential. So ask her for her to help you do that. The message on the card says, look for a cosmic gift. Remember, you deserve it. Remember that? Talking about the desires. That piece is something you really have to shift. That is something you really have to shift. In order to, to, to get what you deserve, you first have to honor your desire. Respect it. Be proud of it. Don't try to contain it. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so we have the Fool card. And this is really um, encouraging you. It says, be free, young soul. So this is encouraging you to take a leap of faith this week. All right. It there was another fool's card where I saw um it wasn't like he was leaping off the cliff, although it was he was at the end of a cliff, but it was all of this um beautiful um vines and things, and there was this white rose, which is a common um characteristic or or a symbol in that card. And it, it was as if he, he found it, he discovered it when he you know, you can see his whole mind and light up. So this card is often uh, associated with the planet Uranus, which is sort of this, um, sort of this sudden uh, shifts, right, in our awareness. So, and then, and then this is sort of a gift when it comes, and it's about being open to this, it, it sort of just changes your whole perception of yourself. And it was interesting in the last few days, I've been having this feeling of sitting, you know, lying in the bed. At first I was thinking about it, you know, what I actually, I don't know why I was having this feeling of looking through my body, through my eyes and realizing that my physical body and how I think it, what it, what I think it looks like and, um, and how it identifies me. I, for mo for moments there, I was aware of that. And it, within that awareness, there's this, there are these questions which like creates this alternative for what you might realize or think about what that identity is. And then I began to wonder what it was like for everybody else if they realized, you know, because what, how I, you see me, I don't see that or vice versa. And, and from within, since we really can't see ourselves and when we see ourselves in the mirror, we're not really seeing ourselves. I mean, the way that, because we can become anything we want, but it's because of sometimes we have a fixed um, perception of ourselves that doesn't allow for us to be as receptive to change. And so it feels like this cosmic gift is going to shift or sort of disrupt the way you see yourself. So here again, if an opportunity presents itself that you were not expecting and then start to let your all of your insecurities get in the way, shift to first the things you know, your strengths, focus on those, and then the potential. But most importantly, just know that you have to keep 
you have to step onto this unknown path and trust that the training, the preparation to become where you, uh, to become that destination, or that opportunity is going to happen. It's going to happen on the path. And I don't know why they just said it clean. Um, I don't know if they mean as in, well, a couple of things, because I see the word clean and then energy. So make sure that, be aware that to work with certain things like the violet flame, because when you think all of these negative things, they stain your energy. Okay. So like work with the violet flame and then ask the violet flame to go before you and to keep your path pure so that you can be, so to have the purity of the full be Focus on being authentic and honoring yourself. What, you know, not just what you know, but be open to what you could potentially be. And so don't determine what you're not before you give yourself a chance to discover. Okay, and we have the Four of Wands. And the card says, celebrate life's important moments together. So, you know, it's okay when an opportunity comes and you get excited about it. It's okay um, to be excited about your, your, your desires. It's okay to look forward to things. It's okay to want certain things, to want a better life for yourself, to want to see yourself improve, to want to evolve, to really want to um, strive towards your potential. So take the time to, to celebrate the moments, the wins that you've already had. Take the time to enjoy. In your life, I'm sure there are things, whether it's an object or people in your life or events coming up in your life that were successful and that are, or, and that you can, um, you know, just, just take the moment to appreciate that, to really appreciate all of your successes and the prosperity that you have. This is sort of like a count your blessings moment. Because what is this doing is will encourage those strengths. It'll encourage you to focus on your potential, to be receptive to your potential and receptive to the gifts, the cosmic gift that the universe will be offering you. And we have the justice card. So it says you reap what you sow. Okay, that whole idea of balance and alignment. So paying attention to what you're putting out there. We pay more attention to the exterior, what's already out there. But we don't pay attention enough to what we're projecting Beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. And it's time for us to allow the mold of our identity to evolve, to crack, to fall away, whatever it needs to do in order for you to emerge, the true you to emerge. And if you are able to appreciate, you know, reframe things that you look at. This is what I meant before. Peace comes not because the contrast goes away and there's only one point. There's only one point of view that everybody is now all circling around and on board with. That is not a human experience. That, it, that would not work. 
But our respect and acceptance and our compassionate understanding of the way the world works or the way the laws of the universe hold um, all of this contrast and balance, understanding this, understanding that what you're projecting is something you can choose. You can make a choice about what you choose to project. You don't have to just keep responding to whatever your fears keep offering. You don't have to keep seeing the world in that, through that lens, because that's not objective. You know what your strengths are, you know what your weaknesses are, but you also are aware of your potential. This, sort of fostering this, will cultivate a peaceful mindset where you embrace all of these tools. They're all helping you to move forward. Just like in the world today at large, there is a lot of just, there's justice in the world, there's injustice in the world, and there's potential. And all of that the contrast of all of that together is what allows us to have choice, to be able to create, to use it to create the kind of lives that we want. But when we believe that we are oppressed by them, that we have, which means when, you, when you're oppressed, it, it means that something has made you feel like you don't have a voice or a choice. And if you didn't have a voice, you still have a choice. And once you own those choices and your voice, no matter what's going on out there, you are free within. All right, let's take a look at the card I pulled from the bottom of the deck. And it's a two of wands. And it says, the two paths, look at that, to happiness our acceptance or action. Well, that just sums up everything I was trying to say. That's why I like to pull these cards from the bottom, the bottom, sort of the bottom line or the underlying sort of um, summary. It's just like a summary of what everything, and that is just perfectly said. These two paths to happiness are acceptance or action. This is your choice, always. These are two, you know, to accept what is acceptance doesn't mean that you um, are going to let something bad happen to you. But it does also mean that you have to ac accept and un go to that greater understanding that this thing is happening to you for a reason. And once you do that, then you know what action to take, which is, how do I work with this energy to strengthen me and to help strengthen the things that I want to do for myself? How is this preparing me? Seeing that struggle as a training session for what you are to become, you can either accept to get on board with that or not. And I think both of these are true. The path to happiness is that I think it's both acceptance and action because once you accept that this is a this is this um, lesson or this challenge is structuring, it's creating a structure for my potential to emerge. Now you know what kind of actions to take because you're going to now take action from empowerment rather than fear or repression, etc. So be very open to the opportunity and the possibilities that are coming to you right now. And they wrote imagination is flash that. Whatever is coming to your imagination 
Nothing would come to you if you're not ready for it. It doesn't mean that you're ready for it right now, but it does mean that you are ready to prepare for it. You're ready for it in the future. It could mean you're ready for it right now. That's what the opportunity would be. And if it's something you're ready for in the future, that's what the possibilities would be. But the idea is do not determine at this stage because the journey is the only way that you'll know, truly know. Don't make a decision based on no facts of reality because that's what you're doing. It's all subjective. You can, you're, it's just um, conjecture. I mean, you, you, you don't have the, the literal experience to say, oh, this was really hard. I didn't like, I hated this. You can't say, I would not like that. You're only doing that based on some things in the past. But as we change, like, I don't know, when I first heard um, atonal music, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm, you know, never. But then after we studied it, I loved it. Just like certain things in art, you know, you like the more classical things. And then you start getting to the stuff that's, you know, more modern and then avant-garde. And you're like, oh, but then you start to really appreciate it. All right. So I think you get where I'm, what I'm talking about here. There's some things that we just grow into we grow to appreciate it. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful week.